Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. One of the best things you can do to improve your health is get at least seven hours of quality sleep every single night. I know, I know, it's hard to get that much sleep. Your mind keeps you awake, you're thinking about things, you get uncomfortable, you wake up early and you just can't fall asleep again. There are hundreds of reasons why you can't get seven hours of quality sleep every single night and I've probably at least told you a hundred. But hey, listen, it's super important because your body heals itself when you sleep. And if you're not getting enough quality sleep, you're increasing your risk of disease and making it harder to lose weight, yes. Wait, would you like to know an easy way to get more quality sleep every night? Make sure you're getting enough magnesium. Believe it or not, around 75% of people don't have enough of it, which helps explain why so many people have sleep problems. Unfortunately, most magnesium supplements are not full spectrum, so they won't fix your magnesium deficiency or help you sleep better. There are actually seven unique forms of magnesium and you must get all of them if you want to experience its calming sleep enhancing effects that's why i recommend magnesium breakthrough by buy optimizers simply take two capsules before you go to bed and you will be amazed by how much better you sleep and how much more rested you feel when you wake up for an exclusive offer for my listeners of the health fix podcast you guys want to go over to www dot magbreakthrough.com forward slash health fix and you can save up to 42 percent yes that's right 42 percent savings on magnesium breakthrough when you go to www.magbreakthrough.com forward slash health fix hey health junkies on this episode of the health fix podcast i'm interviewing dr robert cyprian he has a very interesting story he went from being a gang member and a graffiti thug for over 20 years in New York and turning his life completely around to becoming a holistic doctor. Now he suffered with allergies and asthma and multiple different health conditions and that's what got him to think there has to be something more than this. And today he's going to tell his story. He's also written a book on it so we'll talk all about that. So let's jump into the podcast. Hey health junkies, I have Dr. Cyprian on today. And we are going to be talking about his amazing story from graffiti thug, which is very interesting, all the way to holistic doctor, chiropractor, shaman, all these fun things. But really the big thing I want you guys to be thinking about during this podcast is hope. Hope that, you know, if you are are currently struggling and trying to figure out how to get out of your situation, maybe you've hit rock bottom. Maybe you're just trying to figure out who you are at this stage of the game, you can always transform yourself and you can do it through all kinds of different holistic methods. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Dr. Robert's story and go into it. So Dr. Robert Ziffrin, welcome to the Health Leaks podcast. Thank you very much, Dr. Krauss. So let's, let's go into your story because a lot of people are like graffiti thug, (laughs) gangster. Wait a minute. Those people don't tend to have those spirits that would move into a holistic world. So tell us, like, what was that? What happened? How, how did you shift? What was it? You know, it's really funny because just last week, I had a friend share a bunch of old pictures of me back in like early 1990s in New York. And I'm looking at me in these pictures and I'm like, I had no idea what was coming up for me in the next couple of years. No idea at all. Because those were the last couple of years I was in New York before I decided to become a doctor and everything. But um. I was always like as a child intuitive and um, had a lot of experiences like that. And just where I grew up, it's kind of like all my friends from elementary school, junior high school, like things just started creeping into our neighborhood, like, um, you know, more just violence and crime and drugs. And then kind of like we became like this little kind of gang and we kind of merge with other people. And before you know it, you know, I'm seeing like all sorts of violence happening and crime and everything. And through all this graffiti was kind of like a a thing in New York. Just if you're a kid back then in the eighties and nineties, you're always just going to write on something. 
But for me, I saw some documentaries and books with just the beautiful artwork that was done on the trains and other places and everything. And I was so inspired to do that and follow art and my artistic self. So it really opened up my creative side. And then the universe just kept pushing me because I was so spiritually aware, kept pushing me and pushing me. And I had a motorcycle accident. I went to see my mother's chiropractor and he just like pulled a few bones back in place. And I'm like, whoa, like everything feels better to me. That was mind blowing. Like why are these people taking pain medications and everything? And um, I finally just at one point, so much happened in my life. I decided I'm leaving New York. I'm going to go become one of these doctors of chiropractic. And I moved to the West Coast, to Los Angeles. And soon after I got there and got into, um, I finished up my undergrad. As soon as I got into the graduate school for doctor of chiropractic, my health just fell apart. Um, and it was a blessing because I looked more holistically to things. I looked more beyond just like chiropractic. I looked into nutrition and emotions and acupuncture, meridian energy. And from there, I found a mentor that, literally just like cured me overnight of all these autoimmune issues I had. And from there, I started getting into something called applied kinesiology, which is a holistic kind of view of health using um, body language and the muscles of the body to see what's going on. But also got into other things, um, like more spiritually with shamanism and things like that, whatever really worked for me that helped me in my life to just really feel like, wow, everything just changed. I want, made sure I mastered it. And I also used it for the people I was working with. Wow. Wow. You know, I think it's interesting because I think a lot of people will have these thoughts and, and I, I was similar. I, I went to my mom's acupuncturist and he just kind of took me around. He was a cute Chinese man that probably was 105, but anyway, he, you know, he looked like he was 40 took me around, showed me all the things. And I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. You know, but it took me some years before I figured out, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to do this. Cause I, I had that Midwest thought in the back of my head, like, is this voodoo? Like this stuff's just still kind of weird. And so you had, you know, the chiropractic experience, you went to holistic school, you, you had a mentor who changed things literally almost overnight. A lot of people and, you know, are going to think and go, Hmm what is that special sauce that someone has? And is this really possible? And a lot of times we talk about this. Yes, I'm an acupuncturist. Yes, I'm an acupuncturist. But there is always that back of my mind going like, how do people get that like immediate change? What, what's your thought on that? You know, what did he do? What kind of things, what kind of therapies, what kind of stuff did he do with you? Years ago, I was interested, uh, introduced his philosophy of the 80-20 principle. Okay. Hmm. Um, 80% of the people, what they do in life gives you like a 20% result. Like, you know, people work and work and work and make things happen, but you get a little bit of a result from it. But there's 20% of people out there who their 20% effort will make an 80% result. Um, so I searched out the people that could just make things profoundly happen. For them, it seemed easy. Um, and then again, there's always still that 80, 20 ratio. So even though these doctors are great, maybe 80% of their patients, clients have a huge improvement, but 20% will not. Cause you're always going to be within that ratio on one side or the other. It's just like a law in the universe. I learned. And it's a fascinating law, but to me, yeah, I, I always sought out those people that were just like, were gifted and had this magical effect. And I was just so lucky or kind of guided by the universe to meet these people while I was in school and be able to stand on top of their shoulders, learn what they've learned for the past 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and be able to bring that to other people. Like when I was teaching the doctors, uh, my classes, sometimes I had doctors that were in class with me that were in practice longer than I was alive. And I was my mind blowing to me of like, why are you here to you know, learn from me because they're like, well, you have things I never heard of before. And that's why I got to learn from you. So it was just mind blowing that I was able to just track down these people that made a huge impact and like, Hey, whatever it's going to take, I'm going to learn from you. Even if it took some coercion on my part to just become a, a, a student of this person. No, it's, it's fascinating how that happens. It is like, you know, I think in my career too, it's, it's been like, you just get attracted to certain people who are like, wow, you are, you are getting amazing results. You know, what's your secret sauce? Plus I noticed that you had kind of mentioned in your, in your story on, I think it's on your website guys, by the way, that's heal profoundly. 
health.com. We'll, we'll get back to that here, here too, but health profound health profoundly.com or heal profoundly. I just totally looked at my, my notes and went, <laughs> yeah, he, heal profoundly.com. Good. I got it right. My, my typing, as I've noticed in the last few podcasts, I, I have some typing issues, guys, you got to watch out for me, but heal profoundly.com. So on your website, I think I noticed that you were mentioning about how, you know, someone's working on your neck and, and you can only get to a certain point with that therapy. And, and I think a lot of people, when they think about chiropractic or they think about acupuncture or massage, it seems like it can only get them to a certain point. And this is where we want to start di diving in deeper. And of course, this is part of why I do the podcast and why I bring folks like you on, because I want folks to start becoming open to that deeper thing, because neck pain is not just always neck pain. And hip pain is not just always hip pain. So I would love for you to tell us, you know, a little bit about one of your other types of, of therapies that you do, because I know you do a lot of virtual stuff. And I would love for you to talk to folks a little bit about some of that deeper, profounder stuff. What are some of your favorite things to dive into and, and help folks out with in that department? Well, for me, the, the biggest thing to do if anyone is coming to me in person, virtually, whatever it is is to really think something through. Now, yeah, if someone's neck hurts, you know, that they just have an injury, were they just in a car accident uh, last week? Okay, it could be purely a neck issue. But a lot of people are like, well, no, I've had this neck pain for five, 10, 15 years. I just kind of woke up one day, it was there. Well, to me, that's not like, you know, just a neck issue. You gotta look into things like, maybe digestion, maybe they're eating things they're sensitive to, maybe their stomach's not working properly because a lot of the neck muscles are related to stomach. Um, a lot of times you have, you eat things you're sensitive to and it'll just knock the neck right out of place because all the, the bones of your spine are like different circuit breakers for different areas of the body, different organs, different acupuncture meridians. And there's could be some energies involved in that too, like with the chakra system where there's seven um, areas in the body that are like these energy centers, there's one right on the throat that also relates to your lungs, relates to your thymus, your immune system, that could also pull the neck out. And it could also just be stress. You know, we get stressed, our muscles tighten up and maybe person just has a lot of stress at work or home, or, you know, a lot of people have a lot of stress lately too. So to me, it's about talking to a person and figuring out and kind of being a detective why do they have this? And just really thinking the whole thing through, taking a history, found out, you know, find out when it started, what are they eating, and what types of things are they exposed to in life? Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of times it's not just, I mean, me, my, my first degree as a chiropractor, doctor of chiropractic, it's not always just adjusting the neck because you know, that could come right back in a couple hours, like what used to happen to me I wrote my, in my book or a couple of days. I wanna to get to the bottom of what's, why that's going on there. So maybe I don't need to see them for three, four weeks, a month or so, and they're still feeling fine. That's, that's the cool part is that it's not a like, cause I, you know, as, as we all know with chiropractic and, and even massage and other things, it's like, Oh, I got to go twice a week for the rest of my life kind of situation to keep things going. But if we can get months and months in between or have these tune-ups as, I don't know if you call them tune-ups, but I like to call them tune-ups. It seems to be like that would be such a better way to go about things. Yes. And for me too, it's just kind of like, sometimes they really do need the physical adjustment adjustment. And that will let you know, blood flow increase, lymphatics increase, um, even energy flow in the body. If a bone's out of place somewhere in one of your joints, it could actually block the energy flow and block the acupuncture meridians. Like sometimes someone's having stomach issues. I'll work on their ankles to help get the energy flowing to the stomach from the ankles. And people are like, well, my stomach is not digesting well. I'm like, trust me, your ankle, me fixing this could help that, you know, and they're just shocked. Or sometimes it is the upper neck or somewhere in the mid back. So it just depends what's going on. And, you know, maybe it's for working with the acupuncture meridians. Maybe it's the autonomic nervous system too. So there's a lot of different factors to look at there. And for me, it's like, once I started all this stuff, I became a junkie to just learn more and more and more. I couldn't stop learning. And I just kind of piled on all these layers of whatever's going on, even all the way to like spiritual and shamanism stuff. I mean, sometimes people have a, a dark energy attachment to them that's causing a lot of stress in their life. I've, I've even gone there because I had a pro profound experience with that myself. 
really? Well, you can't just open that up and not tell us that story. <laughs> tell, tell us about that because I, I believe in all this stuff because, you know, the more you get into the field that you're in and you're like, okay, that didn't work, this didn't work. Our, our drive is obviously to help people. So we will find all the different ways to, to stack treatments and different therapies to, to help folks. So this dark energy business is, is a thing. So you got to tell us. Tell us yeah. What so um, when I was uh, practicing in Portland, Oregon, back in the early 2000s, I was working with this young lady who was, um, had a lot of mental, emotional issues. And um, I was always worried about her because she was kind of on the verge of suicidal. If I didn't hear from her for a while, check up on her, see what's going on. She comes in one day, just all relaxed and like, 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 it shouldn't have the weight of the world on her shoulders. And I look at her, I go, how are you doing? She goes, oh, great. I'm like, what did you do? She goes, oh yeah, my uh, massage therapist was working on me and felt something weird. She referred me to this woman that did an exorcism on me. I'm like, who's this woman? Where is she? And give me her card. Like, I, I need to go see what this woman's doing, you know, because my patient just came in like night and day, like totally changed. So this woman, Liliana Barzola, um, I show up at her office and she was just like, at the time, this was years ago, she's like this 28 year old little Latina, like kind of pretty and everything. And I'm just like, you know, this doctor that's got all his degrees and everything. Like, what's this woman going to do for me? You know, I was kind of just, I was curious because I seen the change in my patient, but I'm like, all right, this is going to be very interesting. So I go and work with her and she's uh, just sitting across from me with her eyes closed and tell me what she sees. And I just, she sees it. She's just like releasing some energies from me by having me focus on it too. And she's like, oh, you're releasing some dark gray from your lungs, some dark purple from your, your throat. I'm like, okay, maybe I kind of feel that because I'm kind of energy sensitive. And then she's like, all right, well, we're going to release this dark energy that's stuck around the back of your neck. She goes, now this might be kind of scary, but it'll just take a few seconds. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Like scary to me. Like I grew up as this like, you know, gang member in New York, graffiti artist, all this stuff. And she starts working on me. And all of a sudden I feel my throat start closing up and I, I can't breathe. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. I think I just got to clear my throat, but it gets worse and worse. And my head starts kind of moving back and forth a little bit. And she yells at me, Robert, stay in your body. I'm like, whatever that means, okay. And then my head stopped kind of moving on its own, but I still couldn't breathe. She goes, just give me five more seconds. It'll be done. And then <laughs> she goes, okay, it's off you're doing better. All of a sudden I could breathe again. And I just looked at her. I said, whatever you did, I have to learn that. She goes, come back a few times first. We'll talk about that. So she was my first mentor into this realm. Um, and then I learned from one of her mentors too, the late John Livingston, who wrote a book about this stuff called adversaries walk among us. And uh, I've been doing this stuff for 20 something years. I do it almost daily. And to me, it's a real thing. I mean, we're in this interdimensional soup and most of us can't see what's going on. I don't see much. I see some things, but I more feel things. I'm more of a kinesthetic. I can feel when energies are off around me or at someone else. I could feel these things going on in great detail sometimes. But um, it, it's very important too, to learn what's going on at the interdimensional soup also to kind of see what's going on because these energies, they can cause depression, anxiety, but they could also cause your, your low back or neck to be out. They can cause bad immune system issues. They can cause literal heavy duty diseases in your body too. And sometimes it's a very easy process, but sometimes you got to work with people's emotions of why they have these things in the first time too. Sure, sure. That's crazy. I've not had anything like that quite of an experience. Now I lived in Mexico for a year and I had them do kind of Olympia thing on me in terms of energetics. And I was blown away how I felt afterwards. So I was feeling kind of heavy and more like just like that. And, and it felt so, I felt so much lighter and more airy afterwards. I think I was good for like six months in terms of my overall feeling of, of well being. But, you know, for a lot of people thinking through this, like, Oh my gosh, we know there's three dimensional, you know, third dimension. We know there's multiple dimensions. We know the soup stuff around us, but I think it's, it's hard to, for folks to kind of grasp that. Now, are you doing some of this similar work virtually now? Is that, that some of what you're working with? Yeah, I do all this stuff virtually. And when I was still in physical practice, I did have about 20% of my patients virtual because I was working on people all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, there's different ways I do that. I mean, I'm also a medical intuitive, so that helps out too, but I'll do like muscle testing on myself and just run through my charts and figure out what people need. And 
We could even at a distance help bones go back in place in joints just by releasing the stuck energy in those joints. Really? Yeah. Really? I mean, the energy, the energy and emotional stuff's easy. I mean, a lot of people do that at a distance, but um, I picked up, I was shown this book years ago by this old chiropractor in Midwest who actually used to energetically release the joints in the body with people even at a distance. And um, his name was Dr. Byron Gentry. And I got into it just with some colleagues at first and like, oh yeah, my shoulder feels better. My neck feels better. And then I had some emergency patients couldn't get in to see me and they were across the country. So I'd work on them. And then they're like, oh, you got to work on my mom. She has sciatica. Mom would wake up the next morning. Sciatica is all gone. She wouldn't even believe what I was doing, but then she felt better the next day. So from there, someone at one point said, you have to put this on your website because people need this. So now I work with people all over the world with anything from like, you know, body pains or migraines, also the major types of issues, depression, anxiety, digestion, hormones, anything. Wow. And so what does a session look like? Are, are there, we're kind of like a Zoom kind of like this and, and folks are sitting down and, and talking through what's going on? G- give us a little little teaser. Yeah, and yeah I offer Zoom or phone sessions. Um, some people just don't want to be on video and I totally understand. But um, same thing, like I'll sit down, what's your question? They fill out a questionnaire before and start asking them, okay, when did this start? What else was going on in your life at that time? Just kind of start with a history of people. And then I'll just start checking their energies by doing a muscle test on myself, just kind of testing my own muscles in a way. Because if I could focus on somebody, I could um, focus on where their energy blocks are in their body. It's, it kind of goes back to the whole quantum physics thing. What you focus on, you can connect with, but also what you focus on, you could actually influence that also. So mm-hmm. if I focus on the energy block on somebody, I could just sit there and watch it in my mind's eye because kind of been trained intuitively also. And I could watch that melt and dissolve. And all of a sudden the person's like, whoa, my neck, it feels better. Yeah. And I'll have them walk around a little bit and we'll see what else to work on. Wow. And so I think a lot of people right now are going, okay, that's super cool. Now they might be going, all right, so what do you actually see? Do you see darkness? Do you see colors? Do you, is there something flashing at you? It's all, it's all different. I mean, basically what it is, it's, it's your imagination. It's like, you know, if I tell you just imagine pink elephant, you see this pink elephant in your mind. Mm -hmm. For me, when I'm focusing on someone, I learned it's almost the same thing as imagination. Sometimes I see more profound pictures Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I'm working on someone and all of a sudden I'll see like Violet, like literally in front of me between me and the computer. I'm like, wow, something big's happening here, (laughs) you know? So sometimes that happens too. And a lot of times I'll just feel it. Like I'll be working on someone. I'll feel a tightness in my shoulder. I'm like, all right, we got to look into your shoulder. Something's going on there. So I get messages in all sorts of ways. Sometimes I have a patient's like, um, deceased parent or ancestor show up and start telling me things that happens once in a while too it all depends everyone's different so every time i work with someone it's about who they are and it's always going to be different according to who they are wow now what kind of things do you have to do in between these session sessions to kind of bring that down and not take on certain things because you know yeah. i found is it has been one of the things for me that i've i've had to learn really 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 hard over the years how to get that out and I have to maintain myself pretty well. You know, it's like brushing your teeth and combing your hair. I got to take care of my energy anatomy um, hygiene too, because yeah, I get things stuck within my aura and chakras and meridians from other people too. Cause as I'm focusing on them, I'm, I try not to step into their energy and I try not to use my energy on them. I just try to observe them and let universe, God, whatever you want to call it, do the healing on them as I just observe it. I try to keep that boundary, but yeah, it doesn't always happen. Again, if I go out and hang out with friends, I might feel their energy just hanging out with them, coming home at night, like, all right, I'm going to clean myself out. So every morning I clean myself out. Every night when I go to sleep, I just clean out my energy by different things I've been taught. But even sometimes during the day, if something intense has gone going on, I check myself and clean myself out too. That's, I mean, it, I think a lot of us could benefit from knowing how to do that because all of us have the ability to be intuitive. All of us have the ability to work with others energy. And that's kind of one of the things I like folks to understand that, you, you know, you and I are not just 
freaks of nature. Let's put it that way for a lot of people will be like, oh, they're so weird. It's not like that. It's, it's, we all have this. We all have the ability to take in things too. What do you recommend for, for your clients to kind of cleanse in the morning, cleanse in the evening, kind of shake some stuff off, get the stuff out? The most important thing to do is feel, is to feel what's really going on. The biggest problem that people have is when we feel something that's uncomfortable, we push it in the back and don't want to feel that. Oh, I, I, I don't want to feel that. Oh, I just, I want to think positively. Oh, I want to feel positively. But you're pushing that stuff, that energy in back you and that creates what they call in psychology, the shadow. That's going to come back and literally bite you, blow up on you, cause a major problem one day. So if someone's feeling anger, sit there and just be angry for a minute. I mean, don't go breaking things in your house or if you need to, maybe pick up a pillow and beat up your couch. I've done that before, but feel the anger because when you actually feel the emotion, guess what? You process it. You could feel the anger and you'll feel it like diminish, diminish, diminish. You're like, oh, I don't feel angry anymore. Then feel what you want as a positive emotion and fill that space back up. If you're feeling fear, be afraid. Let yourself have fear. If people really fear, that works on the energy too. That works on energy blocks. If you have a stomach ache, sit there and feel your stomach ache. Just like, all right, I'm going to focus on my stomach ache and just feel it. Sometimes you feel it just go away because this energy is accumulated there. And when you focus on it, if it's not meant to be there, it will actually just melt. It'll, it'll, it'll disperse. That's the biggest thing that if people did this, it could change their world. The, the most common book I recommend my patients to work on themselves is uh, called Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. It's by David R. Hawkins. And this book just tells you how to do that very easily. There's another book that's a little bit more complicated that's just in a similar realm. It's called The Sedona Method. So those are two books that if, it just teaches you to feel your own energy and emotions and it helps to heal it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The Sedona method. I'm not familiar with Dr. or David Hawkins, but I am familiar with the Sedona method. That one's like incredible. And so folks who are listening, if you haven't heard of it, 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 it works. I've used it quite a bit for anxiety. I, as you, if you've listened to this podcast, you know, I have anxiety, but it's, it's one of those things that it really helps to just kind of bring things down in the moment. I, I love that. That is one of the, my favorites, one of my favorites. And it's important for relationships too, you know, with um, your partner, your family, whoever. I mean, in, in a healthy way, sit there and express these emotions with them. Be like, hey, I feel angry right now. I feel sad. You know, just hear me out for a moment. And then afterwards, you'd be like, all right, I feel better. How do you feel about this? That just happened now too, because that's how you keep healthy communication between the people in your life. And you don't let these things build up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. No, I, I think that's a great thing that you mentioned because a lot of us, I think have illness because of our relationships mm -hmm. and our relationships, obviously with ourselves, but also with others. And we're not able to express ourselves. You're kind of the big throat chakra thing and having the neck pain and whatnot. Some of it, you know, not being able to say what you need to say kind of the situation. I'm sure you've seen this over and over again. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. We're, we're fascinating creatures. And, and really, I think the biggest thing that I wanted for folks to have two out of this podcast is yes, the hope that you can help. You can, you can go from such a situation that is, seems like, you know, how, what it, are the stats of someone that is a, a gang, you know, in a gang getting out of it and, and, you know, becoming a doctor. I, I don't know, but it's, it seems to me quite incredible to move that way. And, and the fact that we have that possibility, but then add that on top of, we have the possibility to heal ourselves. We have the possibility to work with ourselves. Sometimes we just need a guide. And so let's talk about your book a little bit. I know it's, it's a memoir and it's talking about healing profoundly. Are we, are you talking about a lot of the different things we just talked about within the book or did we miss something? Is there some other little teaser we can give folks to, to dive into that book and, and get some more information? Yeah, it is. Um, it's just a memoir of my path. And I hoped to inspire other people that, hey, whatever you feel your desires are, your dreams are, that's literally the universe telling you this is what you're supposed to be doing. And to be courageous and just move forward with it because that's what I did. I literally was just like listening to all the guidance I had. And sometimes I had some 
heavy duty, like spiritual guidance show up. Like I've literally had angels appear in front of me and people appear in front of me and just to like sometimes shut me up, but sometimes to get me to do something. And just because I became more and more open and receptive, the universe gave me more and more of that. And yeah, it, it got me to where I was from, you know, being this kid getting caught up in all sorts of um, things in my neighborhood with these guys who are doing drugs and committing crimes and all this stuff. And, you know, I've almost been killed several times, guns to my head several times. I've been so many times beat up bad by gang members and even police officers and all this stuff. It's just kind of the way I grew up, but I wouldn't trade it for anything because it gave me street starts smarts. It gave me intuition. It gave me a way to see the world. It gave me a way to also be able to relate with anybody. And I moved on from that all the way through meeting all these great doctors, healers, becoming in touch with all the spiritual stuff, but also finding myself in Washington, DC, working three blocks in the white house and being invited um, into Secret Service headquarters to do my own lecture for the agents there on how to reduce stress and things like that. It, that, that that's kind of one of the biggest achievements in my life so far. Is like, how does a kid like me get into Secret Service headquarters? And, you know, I'm doing a, a lecture there for a room full of um, officers there, but also kind of like their management and all that and their health department and everything. But it's also being broadcast to a couple hundred agents around the world as they're watching me. And it's just like mind blowing to me. It's just if you have desire and um, excitement about something, enthusiasm about something, if you feel like, oh, this is something I like, just follow it because it's literally the universe telling you go that way. There's something there for you. And it might be not exactly what you felt at first, but you'll keep getting led, keep getting led by your enthusiasm and by this guidance. Uh, you know, I, I think part of it is like people will, will shut down that guidance a little bit and they'll be like, yeah, it's just me and my crazy thoughts again, or, ah, it's just, you know, why, why am I thinking this way? What are some of the things that you did to kind of keep embracing it? Do, at first, when you started thinking like, I want to be a doctor, you know, what did you have to do to kind of help your mind go like, yeah, this is, this is real. I, I really do want this. Can you share that with folks? Yeah. Well, at first um, I did it for the money. I did it for the power. I was just like, Hey, like, I, I don't like where I am. I grew up lower middle class, watch my parents struggle, watch, you know, families around me, um, my friends, parents, I watch them struggle. And I'm like, I, I don't want to live like this. And um, then one day, um, that this, this acquaintance I knew, I didn't know him too well, but I met him a few times. Um, he pulls up while I'm hanging out with my friends on the street, pulls up in like a Lamborghini. And I see this car and someone's calling my name and I don't understand who's calling my name. I'm just looking at this car like there for like two, three minutes. Then I look inside and I recognize the face of the person driving it. And it was so mind blowing to me that someone I actually knew was so successful and abundant because I never had anything like that in my life. So that broke a paradigm for me that this is real people, real people that I know are like this. Mm -hmm. And then um, my first girlfriend, her father was a very wealthy, all self-made. He was a New York city police officer, but started on the side of a security business that would work for big corporations like the Gap and department stores and all this stuff. And part-time on the side, he started a, this huge like tri-state multi-million dollar security business. And I used to work for him um, part-time and everything and I had dinner with him and my girlfriend one night and um, just asked them, how, how'd you do this? He says, it's just, thinking like if you think it's going to happen you keep going till it happens it's just the way you think and I always took that at heart too like someone else I've seen who made such a life for himself that you can do this so yeah I just kept moving forward like that and um once I got to uh school in Los Angeles and I got deathly ill and I needed to get fixed up that's when I found that I'm not just going to like be a chiropractor and work on football players. And I'm going to do more of this holistic spiritual work because then I started meeting these doctors that showed me these other things. And again, the enthusiasm went from my heart, like went through the roof. Like I got to learn that. Like I'm not working on football players. I mean, I, some do come to me, but it's not like what I focus on, but I'm like, I'm doing this stuff. And I dove into it. Um, I wound up actually 
teaching it and getting other degrees and stuff like this. I was teaching internationally and even, you know, as a chiropractor taught for medical associations and stuff like that, like headline, you know, some of their meetings in Toronto and stuff like that. To me, it's just like, I'm just grateful and blessed and I'm still going. I don't know where I'm going to be next. Well, I mean, I have no doubt that you can keep thinking your way and acting on your thoughts and, and keep moving forward. And, and I think your book, Heal Profoundly, and, and guys, the, the website is healprofoundly.com where you can find Dr. Robert Cyprian and all of the different things. He's got a blog, he's got a mailing list, so you can check <clears> in and see what he's up to. But the virtual counseling and energy healing too is, is quite impressive. And from what I've seen online and different things, you guys, it's, it's definitely something to check out, especially if you're looking for someone to help you to move past some of the things that are holding you back right now is the way to go. Something to check out. So Dr. Robert, thank you so much for coming on. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much. I uh, enjoyed chatting and um, yeah, as always talking about things that help others. That's what I love to do. Well, we will certainly keep doing that here on the podcast. And as you move to your next hot thing, we are definitely going to have to check in and see what you're up to. All right. Thank you. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.